Ciao amici, Christina here. In today's video, I show you how to make a no-knead bread with beer. You can use any beer that you want. Just know that the darker beers will give the bread a stronger flavor and possibly a bitter flavor depending on which one you use. And a lighter beer will give your bread a milder flavor. It's really up to you and what you're craving. I've made beer bread with both Guinness and craft beers from my local brewery and both were equally amazing. It's also fun to make beer bread with seasonal brews such as a pumpkin brew in the fall. By the way, this beer bread ferments overnight between 12 to 18 hours, so you can't make it today, but what you wanna do is get the ingredients today, mix it today, and then it'll be ready to bake and shape tomorrow. Today I am making this bread with a pecan amber ale from a local place called Lime Creek Brewery located in Peachtree City, Georgia. What I really love about this beer is that it is sourced with local ingredients and that I'm supporting a local business. Before you begin, pour the beer into a measuring cup. This will allow it to fizz out so that you can check your measurements for accuracy. You might have to do this once or twice. Next, measure out 400 grams of flour, eight grams of salt, and one gram of instant yeast. You're gonna mix all the dry ingredients up. Then you're going to add 300 grams of beer. and stir it up. Cover and let this rest for 12 to 18 hours. So this is the next day. Dust your surface lightly with flour and scoop out the dough. The dough will be very sticky and blobby when you first scoop it out. This is the result of the developed gluten. Don't be afraid of the blob, you'll get it there. Imagine your dough is a face of a clock. Start at the 12 noon marker. Take a piece of dough between your fingers, stretch it out in front of you, then fold it back onto itself. You don't have to press down, just fold it lightly. I'm using my dough scraper because it helps me to pick up the dough. This is called the stretch and fold technique. You don't want to stretch the dough so hard that you tear it, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Just keep going. And you want to repeat this process going all the way around the dough. You can either turn the dough around on the table or leave the dough where it is and move your hands around it instead. Stretch and fold, stretch and fold. You want to do this maybe two or three times around the dough until it gets rather difficult for you to stretch out without tearing. Non più dry farfalon amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano. After the stretch and fold is done, take your scraper and flip the dough over onto its belly button. Now comes the shaping. You can flour your hands if the dough is too sticky, but refrain from using a lot more flour on the dough and on your work surface. This is because you want to have the bottom of the dough ball a little bit sticky to gain traction to properly shape it. Take your hands and wrap them gently around the dough, placing the outside blades of your hands from the top of your pinky finger to the end of your palm on your work surface. With the dough ball between your hands, gently make a counterclockwise circle on your work surface, keeping the blades of your hands as close to the work surface as you can. The dough will move in a clockwise direction while you do this. This motion will form the dough into a ball. Keep doing this until you get a firm, tight ball. When you're done shaping, sprinkle some flour, bran, or cornmeal on your work surface. Use the dough scraper to pick up the dough ball, keeping the belly button down, and place it on the dusted work surface. I'm using organic cornmeal here. Dust the top of the dough ball lightly with the same coating you used for the surface. You wanna cover this with a cloth towel and let it rise for one hour. As you can see, I'm making more than one loaf today. 30 minutes before the end of your second rise, preheat your oven to 475 degrees and place a covered heavy pot on the oven rack while the oven is still cold. A Dutch oven works really well for this. Once your hour is up, 
Using pot holders, carefully remove the hot pot from the oven and uncover it. Take your scraper and lift the dough ball and place it in the pot with the belly button up this time. Please be careful here, the pot is extremely hot. You can also sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal or bran on top. Cover the pot and bake for 30 minutes. After the 30 minute mark, remove the lid and bake 15 minutes more until it browns but doesn't burn. After it's done, cool thoroughly on a rack for about one hour. Here it is, they are ready and I'm gonna try to get you close so you can hear the crackle. The crackle is a good thing. Let's talk about the crackle for a little bit. The crackle is the evidence of the last phase of cooking, which takes place out of the oven. And this is why it's really important to always give your loaf time to cool after you take it out of the oven, because it is still cooking. The exterior of the loaf when you take it out of the oven is very dry, but the interior is still wet. During cooling, the crust starts to shrink and crack. Steam escapes through those cracks. And all that crackling is a result of the steam escaping through the cracks. And that's what makes a beautiful loaf of bread. And that is beer bread. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our future videos. One more thing, if you don't like beer or you don't have any beer, you can always make this bread with water and keep everything else the same. Ciao for now.